want your iDevice to be unique? Then you should check out Pimp Your Screen by Apollon. Now your iPad, iPhone, or iPod Touch can have amazing looking app shelves, neon icon skins, and wallpapers, unique and striking home screen and lock screens that can be customized in a variety of ways, and more. With Pimp Your Screen, you get access to a large collection of Retina Ready original art that is being added to daily at no additional cost. Pimp Your Screen is on sale now for 99 cents in the App Store, and if you can't get enough, there's a Mac version available in the Mac App Store too. Make your device your own with Pimp Your Screen from Apollon. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the Talk of the Mac community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. This time around, I'm happy to welcome Bruce Sharp from Singular Software. He's going to join us to talk about Pluralize. Bruce, welcome to Mac Voices. It's great to have you. Great to be here. So, Bruce, plural, Pluralize, got to get it uh, out. I used this when, and I was really excited when I discovered it back when we were using Final Cut Studio and Final Cut Pro 7, because it, it let me do something that I desperately wanted to do, and it was just, it was magic. So I'm going to ask you to talk about Pluralize. We'll let, let you show the folks uh, what it does, and we'll talk about maybe its evolution as we've all moved to Final Cut 10. Sure. Well, uh, like you, uh, I needed Pluralize to solve a problem that I had. Uh, it's just that when I needed it, it didn't exist. Um, uh, my wife and I um, more started out as a hobby, doing event videos of various kinds, and then it got a little more serious, and people started paying us. And we always wanted to use multiple cameras and always wanted to record the audio separately so we'd have good quality audio and didn't want the hassle of having to route microphone cables and across uh, you know, auditoriums and things like that. So uh, we decided that uh, we could spend a little money on getting some software that would ease the process of the synchronization step that you have to do to bring those cameras together to, to bring in the external audio and so on. And was surprised to find that uh, no such software existed. And because of my technical background, I thought it probably had to be a solvable problem and set about to uh, to solve that problem, and uh, a few years later, uh, Pluralize popped out. <laughs> I notice how you say a few years later. <laughs> <laughs> like like the usual crazy technical people, you know, I'll I'll spend years to come up with a solution to something that I could do by hand in in hours or days. <laughs> uh, maybe so, but in this case, it it certainly paid off. Uh, and of course, what we're talking about is Pluralize takes various camera angles or audio recordings that you have and syncs them up so that you can then do pretty seamless cuts back and forth. And if if you've ever watched a live concert or live sporting events, you, you kind of know what we're talking about. Um, it's one thing to do it live, though. It's another one to take the video with different sources and then try to piece it together and line it up. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, before Pluralize, you, uh, you know, I stumbled over the word too, before Pluralize, <laughs> you really only had a couple of options. You either had some very expensive equipment that would generate time code and you had a way to get that to all your recording devices and, and knew how to use it. Most people don't have that. Uh, or you, you do it by hand. You, you look for something in the, in the visuals that gives you a way to, to find the synchronization point or you, you look at the audio waveforms or, or you deliberately clap or use a clap or something like that. Lots of techniques that are really time-consuming and, and tedious and pretty error-prone. But with Pluralize, what we wanted to do and succeeded in doing was to create a, a way to fully automate that synchronization process. So what it does is it looks at the audio content of all the recordings. So as long as you've got an audio track from all your cameras and so on, looks at that and does some magic mathematical analysis and figures out the best way to put those together so that they sync up perfectly. Yeah, you mentioned clapboards and you know and all kind of things. And that sounds like, oh, well, that should be pretty easy because you've got that nice sharp audio spike or you've got, the, if, if you use something a little more modern, you know, the counting down digital LEDs. And and it you, you use the right word, tedious. I mean, to sit there and try to tweak it by a frame, you know, each thing a frame to line up, uh, it you can do it, but boy, it does take a lot of time. And then once you experience yeah. Pluralize, you realize just how much time it was taking versus how much time this saves you. And honestly, I think it gives a better result. I, I think it does too. And you know, the other thing about clapboards is sometimes the bride and groom aren't that happy when you jump out in front of them and smack this thing in front of their face. So, <laughs> Yes, that's a little detail. <laughs> 
Well, I, I have to ask you before we get into actually seeing a little bit of Pluralize. Final Cut Pro 10 came out, and it included some of this capability. So that meant that you had to up your game or add some extra features. How has Pluralize evolved since uh, since that happened? Well, uh, you know the the latest product that we're working on is Pluralize three, so the third generation of what we've developed, and uh, that was already in the works. I guess around the time that uh, Final Cut 10 uh, came out, so it wasn't so much in response to that, but it, it keeps us moving ahead for sure. Um, it's it's pretty common for uh, an editing suite like Final Cut to include some basic capabilities, you know, built in that are, are just that they're they're basic. They allow uh, people to get started, but uh, they run out of steam after a bit, and people want more. So uh, certainly, when Final Cut 10 came out with its sync. Uh, Ability, people were pretty interested in that, and uh, didn't take long though before they were asking us. So, when's Pluralize going to be supporting Final Cut 10? That, that took us a little, a uh, little while, but we've we've been out there for a while now, and we've got lots and lots of customers using Pluralize with Final Cut 10. Great. Well, if you will, will you show us a little bit of this and how it works and what it means for the viewers? Sure thing. Great. So, let me uh, share my screen with you so you can see what's going on here. Okay, so here we're looking at Pluralize 3. And as I say, this is the latest version of Pluralize. Uh, the first version came out about three years ago at the uh, NAB show in 2009, and we've upgraded it substantially since then, partly because we've used it more and we've learned more about what we'd like it to do. And we've learned a lot from our customers as well, both just hearing what they have to say about it, but also getting a lot of the data that they use and uh, working with that and uh, always making it better. So today I'm going to, I'm going to show you Pluralize 3. This is uh, just in beta right now. So it's, it's not available for, uh, for purchase, but it, it's an open beta, public beta. Anybody can go to our website at singatorsoftware.com and, and download a copy to try it out. So let me show you the general idea of, of how this works. Uh, in this particular case, we've got a video of a live concert. There's three cameras, camera one, camera two, camera three, that were used to uh, shoot this concert. There's also an audio recorder. It was the uh, popular Zoom H4n. And the cameras in this case were actually just uh, little handheld pocket cameras. Uh, we didn't, didn't uh, want to do anything terrifically fancy, and it was partly to show that uh, Pluralize will work not only with high-end professional equipment, but even with uh, very much consumer-grade uh, equipment and, and prosumer equipment that's becoming more and more popular, even in the, in the professional circles. So uh, I won't step you through all the, the steps of setting up the project, but basically what we did was we, uh, we said that uh, we, we have a couple of cameras, and then we pressed the plus button, and we searched around and, and got the media files and added them in to uh, the timeline here, and or added the, the clips that we recorded into each of these uh, bins for the media. So this is coming straight from the, the, the file system. So we laid it out here. Uh, there's a synchronized button here. What we want to do is to get all these clips, which as you can see are, uh, you know, there's many, uh, many um, clips here. The cameras were turned on and off and uh, all sorts of things uh, happened during the recording. Uh, we don't know when these cameras were turned on and off. We don't know when each of the cameras started. So that's that's what the synchronization task is, to get those things all lined up uh, in their proper locations. And that's what Pluralize is going to do for us. We press the synchronize button. It did the analysis, and it's done. So I don't know how much of that sort of animation came across the, uh, the interface we're using here, but uh, that just took a, a split second, actually. Uh, now, this is not an extremely complicated project. Uh, it's about four and a half minutes long, I guess. We've got about 20 clips or so in it. Um, uh, but certainly something, if you had to do that by hand, that would have taken you many minutes at least. And if you look at the audio waveforms you have to work with here, it's it's just a lot of noise. So there's not a lot to work with in terms of uh, picking up uh, synchronization points uh, by eye. Yeah, that's. I, I'm, I'm looking at the resulting chart there of, of what happened. And I think it's intriguing that it, it grabbed it. It appears that the cameras were turned off uh, in certain places or turned on in certain places, all in the same line. 
And so each one of those lining, lining up tasks was done that quickly. And otherwise you'd have to do, I mean, that'd be hours. That'd be a day or more of trying to get that stuff lined up properly. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, this is, uh, you know, we deliberately turn the cameras on and off because that was one of the first questions we would get about, uh, pluralized. Now it's, it's, easy for pluralized to figure out how to deal with cameras that go on and off but it's really hard for people and we had a lot of like wedding videographers that would say okay at the beginning of the day everyone's you know we're together and we um you know we have all the cameras pointing at a clapper and we'll clap it and then everyone goes out and then somebody forgets and turns off their camera and they lose the sync <laughs> uh, it's just just kind of crazy plus they have to leave their cameras running all you know a long time and filling up their discs and tapes and things <laughs> instead of just having the freedom to to shoot when when they want to shoot and that, that kind of stuff so uh yep having a lot of clips and um having them uh cameras on and off not not a problem at all and it's one of the ways that you know we talked a little earlier about how using pluralize can simplify the production side of things too because you don't have to have a lot of cables and time code equipment that kind of stuff this is another way too it just lets you have that freedom to uh, take the shots when you want to take them and know have the confidence to know you can put them together in post this is one of the cases where you can fix it in post <laughs> yeah well i think we're all uh, becoming more and more gifted at that um <laughs> Bruce, how is this running? Is this now a separate application? Is this running as a plugin or of, of some kind to Final Cut or Premiere? Uh, and I'm, I'm asking that because the, the, the Final Cut versus every, everyone else is out there, but also there are iMovie owners that might be interested in, in trying to do this as well. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the answer is uh, yes to all of the above. It is, uh, well, it's a standalone application, but it has integrations in with all the popular, uh, you know, professional video editing packages. So Final Cut, both Final Cut 7, Final Cut 10, Premiere Pro, Media Composer, and uh, on the Windows side, uh, Vegas Pro, and uh, Edius. And uh, did I say Premiere as well, of course, Premiere Pro. Um, so it's got integrations, all those, and the nature of the integration varies a little bit from package to package, depending on what kind of development interfaces were available to us. But if you don't have any of those, maybe you're an iMovie user or some other uh, one of those editing suites that we don't support directly, uh, you can uh, use, in Pluralize 3, use uh, capabilities which come over from our Pluralize product, which is kind of a sister product to uh, pluralize to uh, uh, dualize. Did I call it pluralize? I meant to say dualize. Dualize is the sister product, and it's intended uh, specifically for the case where you have um, a camera, often a DSLR camera, and separate audio recorded, and you want to sync those, and you want to basically replace the camera audio, which is typically not that great. You want to replace that with your externally recorded audio. So Dualize will let you do that, and that functionality is in Pluralize 3 as well. And the way that works is it'll actually uh, create new copies of your video clips where the audio has been replaced. The camera audio is thrown out, the good audio is put in. You can bring those uh, new video clips into any uh, NLE that you want to, whether it's iMovie or one of the ones that we, we happen to support uh, otherwise. So... I guess I, I mean what I'm hearing is that I would start with Pluralize for a new project if if I had those three camera uh, shots and the audio, uh, or is there a way for me to work with something I've already imported into Final Cut and then send it uh, round trip it out to uh, Pluralize and then back to Final Cut? Yeah, you can you can certainly do that, and I can uh, give you an example of how that works. So let's take. Uh, let's flip over here to Final Cut 10. I've set up the same project here in Final Cut 10, and um, you can see the same sort of uh, situation here. Three cameras, lots of clips because the cameras were turned on and off. And uh, what we want to do is do the synchronization and have it come back into Final Cut uh, for, for editing. So um, the way it works is uh, that the interface to uh, Final Cut 10 for us is uh, by exchanging XML files, essentially. So the project we have is, is called FSB, and we go to the file menu, and we uh, export XML. So I've already uh, done that, so let me just uh, not belabor that step, but instead we'll go over to Pluralize and uh, import it in. We say new project from Final Cut Pro 10, and we find that XML that we exported and open it up, and there we go. Uh, there's all the clips uh, set up for us here. 
we do the, the synchronization step as before. Uh, it just takes a second, and then we do export timeline, and that will send it back into. We have a number of number of ways to export it. You can see Final Cut 10, Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, all these things. We we want the Final Cut Pro 10. We'll say export, and it will uh, bring that back in directly into Final Cut 10, and uh, we've got it there to to work with. I love the fact that you've you've made this available not only to the pros but also uh, through through the other products to, to the the more casual user. Although I, I'm not sure that anybody that's in Final Cut 10 is a casual user. On the other hand, uh, if if you invested, and certainly Final Cut 10 is a lot less expensive to get into if you want to get serious about video editing than than its predecessor. Uh, but Pluralize is not nearly as expensive as I would have thought. And, and that, that's kind of exciting because it puts it within reach of people that want to start trying these projects and doing them. Yeah, we set the price at $149, and that was to appeal to a broad range of, of users. Um, you know, primarily it is a tool for um, professionals, but we didn't want to exclude the enthusiasts, the hobbyists, and, and the people who are just kind of experimenting with things. And there's obviously more and more of those uh, people all the time. The quality of cameras that you can get for a few hundred dollars or a couple of thousand dollars is just astounding. The quality of audio recorders that you can get is, is just amazing. So we wanted to make it uh, a very affordable price for everyone. Folks, before we cut back away from Bruce's screen, just take a good look at at what he just accomplished there in in literally seconds, and if you haven't tried it before, you don't appreciate what what it would take to do that, and you would still have a very questionable, <laughs> very questionable result most of the time. Uh, it it makes a huge difference. Maybe I can uh, show you one more example of of this. Sure. So you so you don't think it's just uh, you know a dozen clips that that you uh, can do. Uh, here we've got um, this is actually an indie film from uh, one of our uh, customers that are working on this. And now here we've got, uh, like, I guess the duration's about an hour. We've got 100 and some, 130 clips or so. And this may give you a little more of a chance to see Pluralize in action as well, because it does take a, a little bit longer. I don't know if you can see those dancing little yellow triangles uh, moving around. But as the synchronization is happening, it shows you what's happening so that you can... Uh, make sure that you're you're happy with the way the synchronization is proceeding. Make sure you set it up correctly. That kind of thing. Uh, we're we're finished here. That's 130 clips and a couple hours worth of material done in about I don't know 10 seconds or 15 seconds or so. Uh, you'll see here also uh, most of the clips are colored green. That's because they synchronized successfully. There's a few uh, clips um, that are red and they didn't synchronize. But the reason they didn't sync is actually there was nothing for them to sync to. So this this clip over here, for example, there's no uh, a clip underneath it to sync to. So that's another thing that we've added in Pluralize 3 is that you can do a, when the sync is finished, you can do this quality control step, take a look at what the results are in, in great detail if you want. And I won't go into all the uh, ins and outs of that, but there's there's lots of tools that we've given you so you can make sure the sync is exactly what you want. If, if it's a little off for any reason, or maybe you want to add something in or do something special, you, we've got tools to, to tweak things. So by the time you, you take this back into your editing suite, uh, you're really confident that it's just exactly in the shape that, that you want it to be. Bruce, again, before we leave this, uh, we need to tell folks what kind of Mac you're running on. You're not running on a Mac Pro with you know 500 cores. Uh, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> not at all, although it would go screamingly fast on, on that, even, even faster. But this is uh, just a MacBook Pro uh, that I'm running on here, pretty... Uh, Pretty handy little machine, but it's, uh, I guess it's a quad core MacBook Pro, uh, recent generation before the Retina. Yeah. And, and the point I want to make is that it doesn't take big iron to run this and have it be useful. Uh, you just, just saw all those clips for a movie, you know, synchronized just that quickly on a machine that probably the majority of our audience either has or is well within their reach. Yes, definitely. This is, I mean, it's a great little machine uh, for editing, but it's not your high powered big iron. That's, that's for sure. And we, we've done a ton of work to make this synchronization fast. Uh, the, the change from Pluralize 2, which was already quite fast to Pluralize 3, uh, we're now like 10 to 20 times faster than we were already in Pluralize 2. So that's, that's just taken a lot of our attention and we really wanted to make that 
good and quick for people. Bruce, I was so glad when you when you answered my uh, request for an interview because I really got excited way back when with Pluralize as it was then, and it's just gotten better. It's just gotten more useful. It's gotten faster. It supports more. I mean, there's just no reason if you're if you're really quasi serious about this, or maybe you just want to do your your kids football games with a bunch of different people shooting things or your kids band or your friends band or you know i I can think of a lot of reasons to do this and have a lot of fun with it yeah well it actually started you know i talked about uh you know the family doing event videos the the very first ones were the kids dance recitals and that kind of stuff we we quickly became the go-to parents for making the dvds of the the dance recitals and so on and that's that's actually where it came from and i'd I'd be thrilled to know that there's people using it for for that reason as, as much as anything else so we have pluralize we have dualize any other products from singular software we have uh, a cloud version of our synchronization technology called CloudEyes. And uh, this one's a little different because unlike Pluralize, Dualize, it's not intended for the end user. Instead, it's intended for developers who want to create a web-based product that does something with video. An example of that, there's some uh, folks at a website called Outlisten at outlisten.com. And the idea there is that uh, you go to a, a concert and apparently nobody actually listens to music at concerts anymore. They just pull out their phones and record it. You can go to Outlist and upload all those video recordings, and then they use CloudEyes, which is basically the pluralized synchronization technology. They use CloudEyes to synchronize all those videos and create this multi-camera concert video, crowd-sourced, fan-sourced, uh, fan-shot uh, concert video. So that that's an interesting new uh, offering. We've got uh, some pretty interesting uh, customers doing, doing things with that. The... Uh, the one other product that we have is, is a little different again, but it fits into the theme of how we want to automate workflow as much as possible. This other product is called Presto. And Presto is all about making a very particular kind of video production. It's one where you've got a presenter who's got some slides and, the, and you want to roll that into a video, put it on YouTube or wherever, sort of like a TED Talk kind of presentation. Uh, I've done a ton of those in my time, and they're also not a lot of fun to do because there's just not a lot of scope for creativity there, right? You've got to just track the presenter and make sure you keep them in frame. You've got to put the slides up. You probably want to do a little picture-in-picture kind of thing, and it's all all a little bit fiddly and so on. So with Presto, again, we've automated that process uh, to an incredible degree. Uh, You put a, as you're recording this presentation, you put one camera on the screen where the slides are showing, doesn't have to be a good quality camera, and that video won't be used it's just for reference only. Put another camera on the presenter, and you and you go there with a USB key, so you get a copy of their PowerPoint or keynote slides at the end of the thing. You put those ingredients into Presto, and it automatically figures out by looking at the screen and at the slides, figures out which slide should be presented when, when to do the switch up. Keeps uh, automatically tracks the presenter to keep them in frame of the camera, and uh, puts it all together into a perfectly usable presentation in like a couple of minutes in something that would take you normally hours uh, to put together. So as I say, it fits in with the the theme that we have as trying to automate the post-production workflow as much as possible and and take away tasks that are not creative so that people can spend more time focusing on the creative tasks. Okay. You just took a weekend or two of mine because I have not seen Presto and that I've had to do some of that. And now I want to go see it and play with it. And and the cloud eyes thing is, is interesting. So you're offering that as, as a back end to, uh, to developers who want to put a front end on it, maybe themed based on their particular interest or their market. That, that's exactly right. And, you know, we had the idea that maybe we would create those kind of applications ourselves where people would go to a website and somehow share video with their friends and put it together somehow. But that's a little different from our kind of core business. We decided we'll stick with our knitting and instead make that capability available to all the tremendous creativity and innovation that's out there uh, in the marketplace of other developers who have a, a ton of different ideas. And, and believe me, they come forward with ideas I never would have thought of in a million years. Uh uh, and we give them that that synchronization capability, which is, of course, uh, a critical thing when you you're taking in video from people who didn't even know the other people were shooting. And, you know, if this, you're at a concert, everyone's just shooting with their cameras. There's no way to collaborate ahead of time to figure out how you're going to make that all work and so on. You've you've got to do this uh, automatic synchronization afterwards, and, and Cloudways can do that. Bruce, it's all very cool. 
where do po- folks go to uh, to get all of this stuff? Are you in the Mac App Store, or is it strictly on your website? Strictly on our website at, at the moment. Uh, so people can go to singularsoftware.com. All the products I've talked about today, there's uh, trial versions that are available. They're all free, fully functional for 30 days. There's no watermarking, none of that stuff. And uh, yeah, happy to have people come by and, and uh, try these things out. Fantastic. Well, thank you for being so generous with uh, with your time and showing us Pluralize. It's something that I really can get excited about, and it sounds like you have some other things that I can really get excited about, too. We, we love the products, and we've been very happy with the reception we've, we've had to them. You know, there's another thing I want to bring up just before we go. Please. Which is that there was some pretty exciting news for us as a, as a company in the last a few weeks, which is that Red Giant Software has actually acquired the products of Singular Software, and they will be doing the uh, sales and marketing uh, for them uh, in the future. Uh, the Singular Software team, the development team, will continue to uh, support the, pr- the existing products, create new products, and looking forward very much to collaborating with Red Giant on some new products in the future as well. So some people may have heard that news and wonder what does that mean for the products. Uh, I can tell you it means nothing but good things for everybody. That's so good to hear because anybody that does video at all knows Red Giant. Um, For sure. But at the same time, tell them to keep their hands off of these products. They're good. (laughs) Improve them the right way, but don't mess with them too much. Uh, Red Giant's a great home for these products, so I'm very happy with how that's worked out. Uh, That's terrific. Well, congratulations. That's fantastic. And maybe we can get somebody from Red Giant on to talk about that and everything else they do. For sure. I'm sure they'd love to. Great. Bruce, thank you so much. Again, we will uh, hopefully talk to you again under the banner of Red Giant when the next cool thing comes out. You bet. Good to talk to you. Folks, that's Bruce Sharp. He is with Singular Software, who is now part of Red Giant. I will have links in the show notes so you can go and check out Pluralize and Dualize and Presto and CloudEyes or the information that's available on CloudEyes, everything there, along with everything else that the Mac Voices Group is doing. Until the next time, I'm Chuck Joyner. Thanks for listening. Mac Voices TV is part of the Mac Voices Group at macvoicesgroup.com. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com.